Hello and welcome back to American Farming. Right, we are cracking on with our alfalfa hay baling. Um, at the... Oh, I've completely lost one there. That's fine. We'll go find that before we forget about it. Oh, I've lost it. That is not exactly... Did it go this way? Oh my goodness. I've actually lost that bale. <laughs> oh no. Well, I'm sure I'll either either find it again or uh, it'll just yeah, come across somehow. Anyways, we are cracking on with the ba <laughs> with the bailing. That's not a great way to start, but that's fine. There we go. Another one in the throwing rack. Um I have decided that I will have to look into the producing of root crops in a future summer. Uh, unfortunately, we are pa past the time to put any sort of root crop into the ground. So, uh, and what this is in reference to is to the alfalfa itself. Because, oh, we're going to have a grass bale. Oh no, it's good. It went as alfalfa, I reckon. Alfalfa hay. Anyways, the mower is cutting. I don't know if this particular mod has a built-in uh, conditioner, if it's meant to condition the grass as it goes, which would result in a hay uh, versus a fresh variety of it. Um, oh, that bale's going to shoot out. Just missed. Saw that one, though. Saw that one. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what to do about, uh, about all of this. Basically, the alfalfa isn't able to be produced because it's turning directly into hay. Not entirely certain why, but that is just the way it is. Um, there are a few missed bits here, but not too bad. Um, yeah, just this little bit here. So I'll, I'll get this set off again. Yeah, I'm not too fussed about those bits there. I'm not... I don't know what to do. Um... I do, I do feel as though it would be good to have a, an area specific to grass like this. There is a bit of a divot in the, uh, in the field there that doesn't allow me to go all the way. It was causing an error, an issue. See right there, it's, oh no, no, I didn't do it. Anyways, this is out the way, so that's good. No, it's not. Put it fully out the way. Uh, we are going to crack on with the baling. I have set up a buy point for a uh, for root crops so that we can at least get those root crops that we need for the animals that we can't get from the alfalfa. So, for example, we have uh, cows that need moisture food. Alfalfa was meant to be that for them this first season. But now it's going to be either potatoes or sugar beets. Same with the chickens, but theirs is only 10%. Moisture food for cows is 20 So nevertheless, they still need it. Uh, so we do need something. So the plan is, we will visit this buy point at some point. Probably after we harvest the grain. Because we do need to make some... Uh, what is it called? Mineral feed as well. So that we're going to get from the wheat and we will get some lovely potatoes or sugar beet for the animals as well. And then that way by the end of July, or at least in, in that month, we can buy some animals, which is very exciting. Very excited about that. Uh, but we will crack on with the hay baling and see how many little bales we get. Alright, I am actually going to stop it there for a moment. As you can see, the pickup width of this uh, baler is awful. Absolutely awful. So, I need to row it up first before we can actually bale it. Because I'm going to be basically going around twice if I don't do that. So, we do have a row. We might as well use it. The case could be the one to do that. So, I will just leave this here. Now, having this sort of setup is a bit... Oh, is it, oh, it's loaded, I see. Okay, we'll just disconnect then. Uh, having this sort of setup is a bit 
can be a bit frustrating because there is two pieces, there are two pieces for everything. So, for example, if we wanted to get rid of the, some of these bales, because that is quite full, I reckon. We, we, don't, we could put more in, but I think that's plenty. Um, oh, hello. So we are going to go and get rid of these, just to make room for more. But uh, yeah, we are going to row this up, because this is absolutely mental. That is just, it's too, the pickup is way too off. We could also do uh, loose hay, but I don't know if we can store it properly. We do have a, a bit of a hay loft, but I think it's meant more for bales. Anyways, we are going there now, so I will show you that, because we've never been there before, so might as well show the process. Very pleased about this. Not about all this kit everywhere. I do need to get this stuff cleaned up and relocated. Uh, but we are still in the busy time, so when it slows down a bit, we can tend to all that. Uh, that machine right there, so just before we do the bales there, this machine here is going to be used to create mineral feed for the, uh, for the cows. Which is really great. So we can definitely... I don't think we need to feed those to the chickens as well. No. No mineral feed for the chickens, just for the cows. So we are going to use wheat uh, for that, which is really, really handy. So if we turn, should be about here, and the bale should, should start to uh, load in. Beautiful. Excellent. Now you're probably wondering, where have they gone? Where have they gone, mate? Well, I'm going to show you right now. So I think if I go this way... Yeah, I'll just go up here. Ta-da, there they are. Wow, so lov lovingly stacked as well. So we did get two in. That's fine, two grass ones. There we have it. And when they spawn... I don't know if I can open this or not. Can I open this window? I think maybe not. Anyways, the uh, other side of the barn is right there. So when we spawn them out, which the trigger is nearby somewhere, we uh, can spawn them directly in to the cow shed. With a cow uh, area, the feeding area, then we just have to shift them over to the f to the trough, and they are fed. So very easy indeed. Uh, when we do have to feed, well, I was going to say the alfalfa bales, but now we don't have any alfalfa bales, so never mind. Right, I'm going to take this back to the field. I will get the windrow set up on. Uh, I suppose the case would be best, and uh, and then we can crack on. All right, here we are in the field again. Uh, I think, yeah, we'll just start on this side, kind of get it cleaned up a bit. So, this is pretty cool, this uh, double row. So, you can have one or two, and you put two together, and then it becomes even better. So, we'll get it working, possibly. I think once it's lowered, it's fine. It starts to do its thing, so that's really good. So, I know it's not really a... It's not really going to be that much of a tighter um, or less rows or whatever but it is going to be a tighter width of swath which is really really what I was after anyways I'm gonna try and actually go straight on because that is what works best with this baler setup anyways um, is to go straight on so I know it's gonna mess up all the lines but it is going to rectify them at the same time just hopefully they're not too too wide but they already do look a little less wide so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I will try and, yeah, go straight on. Unless for some chance I can get... No, I I was going to try and get a helper to do this, but I think this kind of job is fine on my own because the the where I want to go. If it was just a random job that needed doing, that would be different. But Anyways, um, yes, we will crack on here. Is that the bale? Ah, I knew I'd find it eventually. Uh, might just tuck it in. Oh, hello. Just going to put it near to where we've grown so I can see it and pick it up when we come through with the baler. But yes, we'll crack on here with the rowing and then once we've done that, uh, time dependent, we'll just head straight into the baling and uh, get as much of it done as we can.
here is the end of the rowing. Actually, I think there is a small bit on the far side there that hasn't been done. Uh, but we will get these lifted up. Hopefully. Nice. There we go. And uh, we'll just get it tucked to the side so we can crack on with the bailing. Ah, yes, just over here, but that's fine. We'll get these uh, rows started up because we'll probably have to uh, unload the baler a handful of times, or the bail throwing rack. Um, so I've got, I've got, I have a few options now when it comes to bales. So I, I quite like this setup. It's, it's different very different for what I'd normally do um, so I'll probably stick with it for a bit but the only problem I'm having now really is with the bloody pickup width because it is a bit much but if we can oh my yeah let's reverse with this setup sure that's a good joke okay there we go <laughs> so it's better if I stay lined up um, but yeah, it's just, it misses bits here and there. I'm trying to stay as nice and lined up. If I stay with the rear wheel just next to the swath, it should be fine. Seems to be working much better, actually. A lot, lot less missed bits. Um, but it is one extra step. But it's fine. We have the rows for a reason. And uh, we don't have to ted when it comes to making hay, which is also uh, a benefit there and it's not like we have to get every single little bit although with the small bales it makes sense to because we can make a few bales in a in a small amount of of time really um, however I may switch to a, uh, a round baler at some point or a different baler uh, I haven't fully decided just yet but we do need to get this bale in as well the one lonesome bale that tried to escape I suppose <laughs> right so we'll take a few uh, a few passes here because we do want to try and get here I'm gonna get this long bit if I can do just trying to get as much hay in as we can it is hard to estimate exactly how much we've got as well um, because I think each bale is four oh, 500 liters no Oh, nearly 600 litres. So, 600, you know, and we've got maybe 20 there, I, I suppose. Is there a counter on this? Oh, there is. We've made 77 bales. 78 bales. So, there you go. That gives you a bit of an idea. Two of them are grass, though, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, the biggest thing is that we have enough hay for the cows uh, so that they can survive, which is really, really important. Again, I don't think we need hay for the chickens. I don't think they have a roughage requirement, but uh, either way, we're going to have loads of hay here, so we will crack on with the hay baling, and uh, again, just see how many we get. Well, I seem to be losing bales now. Um, I didn't notice this one, but I did see a couple there, and then they just kept coming, so I decided, why is this shut? Well, that's why they're falling out. Or not shut, rather. How do you get that closed? Why is that opened? That is quite silly. Okay, shut that down. 
Right, we need to figure out why is that open? I can't close it. No, that sh shoots the direction of the bale. That is very, very strange. I must have accidentally uh, closed, or rather opened, I keep saying the wrong thing, uh, closed the, uh, or opened the bloody chain. It definitely wasn't like that before because the bales were bulging out the side the last time. So that's a bit strange. I don't know why. Maybe now I can close. Ah, N, bloody hell. Should have tried that before. Nevertheless, we do have about five or six bales that we lost here. Um, but I, as the counter said, 178 bales is what we've got so far. I'm pretty certain that's what it said. So if we do have that, let's call it 176 because there are um, two brass bales. That is over 100,000 litres of hay, which is really good. Uh, but I wonder, though, how many bales would that have been in a square variety? Do you know what I mean? If they were five, let's say they were like 5,000 litre bales, I think which is what the average round bale is. Maybe five and a half? Let's try five and a half and see. So that would be about 20 bales, um, just with my quick maths there. Um, not too certain which is more productive because now I'm faffing with this the nice thing about feeding these bales to the cows is that you can just oh you joker absolute I want VAR call on that handball in the box right um yeah I don't know I don't know what's the better option because these are easy to feed to the cows because I can just pick them up but they keep oh bloody hell uh, but we do have the bobcat, which is exactly what that is, its job is, is to help with feeding, help with loading, uh, and that includes bales. So I think, I think I might upgrade to a full size baler. I do like these small bales, these little con conventional bales, I think they're called. Um, possibly. Uh, and I, I do like them, but we'll see. It's just, yeah, if I can get another baler, well, we should really have a look at what other balers we have. So let's go to drop these ones off at least, and then uh, and then have a look. Right, more hay into the loft, and we did lose one from last time as well, it would seem. So we'll just get that put in. Brilliant. Okay, bale-wise, we have... Anything in the sales? No, nothing for us. So we'll go down to Baylor's. We do have, I believe, yes, we do have a, a, a John De Well, I suppose the Vermeer is also a very good. This is quicker, though, and I wouldn't mind using it. Silage Special. Interesting. I don't think we'll be using it for silage but if we do we have the additive tank right there which is very handy it does all oh right so it only does 180 centimeter bales whereas this one can can do 125 to 180 which i guess that's fine that they're the biggest size at least um i guess these are all considered conventional bales are they not so yeah, as I say, this is good. I mean, we could even look into upgrading to this one. Oh, it's so it's slower. I thought 12 kph was fairly slow, but blimey, these ones must only fill up to... They're 120s. Interesting. Well, I don't know. We'll have to look into it. I mean, we're going to finish with what we have now, but uh, we will see the outcome when the time comes, really. Um, I do I do like this setup with the thrower rack and that. I love how the chains wobble about when they're, when they're closed. When they're open, they don't wobble. When they're closed, they do. I much prefer them closed. Right, we'll head back. We'll head back into the field um, and we can crack on with the bailing. We'll get this filled up again. Um, might go back for the scraps. We shall see. 
but uh, I'll get the majority of this done. Probably off camera, just because we've done so much of it already. Um, although the bailing is quite interesting, I, I do I do quite like doing that uh, in a time lapse. But as you can see, either I'm s s really rubbish with this baler, or the pickup is just still a bit narrow for the, the width of the swath, really. Even with the row, even though we've gone by with the row, it's still unfortunately a bit sloppy so yeah we are nearly done though I reckon one more uh, one more trailer load one more wagon load of bales should do it and then we can get it loaded into the loft and then we have to pretty much just wait until July uh, before we can move on and then we'll get the wheat harvested and get the animals and get them fed Right, here we are behind the cow barn in the bushes, it would seem, in the trees. <laughs> there we go. Just getting the final load of hay in. Not not a full load. Uh, we probably could have snuck out another bale, but nevertheless, we did get 221. Although, 220 or 19 of them are actually hay. One of them is, two of them are grass bales. So we are going to just quickly go up here and have a look. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that is impressive. So at, so the total capacity here, it does say we're at 222, so that's good. But the total capacity uh, is 1792. And at 220 bales... So 132,000 litres of hay we have here. So that is fairly impressive. We could fit a lot of hay up here. Very quickly, we'll go down to show interactive zone markers. So if we open this, hello, then we can see the bales we have. And so the grass bales, we'll get two of them. We'll take them out. So as you can see, they are gone now from here. And I'll show you where they've gone. So we go down this way, we'll leave that door open for now. This door open as well, just so we don't have any cows yet, so it's fine. Run through here, we've got the milking parlour there. This is where we will probably be mucking out, putting straw in, that sort of thing. But here are our two bales. Ta-da! So when we get hay in, we can just throw it into here, because this is their trough that the food needs to go, the silage and all that. I, th I wish that could open, but... But it's not like you can throw them out. If they spawned up there and you couldn't open that, that would be well annoying. Very, very annoying indeed. Um, but yeah, there we go. So we will just turn those off. These I will bring over. Is there a way out that way? No. Nope. I can't run with these, can I? Barely. I will get them both out. I'm going to bring them over towards the fermenter because then I can cut them open and uh, bring the bobcat down and just get them loaded that way. Uh, into the fermenter because, yeah, they are better off as silage. Get them pushed over here. It's alright. Come on. Yeah, we'll just put them there for now. They won't go in. I don't, I don't reckon they'll go in. They have to be loose. Yeah, it's fine. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll get them cut and put in with the bobcat another time. Uh, I think that production, though, has finished. I'll just have a quick check. Yeah, I turned it off last time. So we do have 42,000 litres of silage, which is really brilliant. We do need more silage than we need hay, though. So we do need to look into either this fermenting silo accepting alfalfa, but we can't even get alfalfa. So if it can accept alfalfa hay... Then we could use that to also produce more silage, but our primary is going to be from chaff anyways. That's the the whole point of the corn silage. So that's really exciting there. I cannot wait to dry some corn as well. And here, as you can tell, we do have the uh, tomatoes growing nicely, very nicely indeed. Now, let's have a look. Sales again, always like to check. That's interesting. Well, I think that's a modded version of it to hold propane as well as everything else. So that's pretty cool. It's not a bad deal. We don't need it, though. We don't need it. Um, 
Right, what are we doing? We are looking at our crops, because we want to see how everything is getting on. Because I think we'll be harvesting wheat next month. Yep, definitely. Hmm. Corn and silage corn will be, of course, in October. But in this time again, we'll be able to get some more... Um, what was it? More hay made in the summertime. So we'll have the harvest for the wheat, and then, yeah. So also, I would like to either plant in potatoes or sugar beet for the future. Now, kit-wise, I don't think I have anything too... Yeah, nothing too f American focused. I think these are all... But they could be for fairly universal as well. And there are packs that I can add in uh, as well. Uh, like the Grimmer pack for potatoes and all that can help along with that. I would like to look into the anhydrous, anhydrous ammonia. I think that's what it is. So there are cultivators that you basically attach to your tractor and then from the uh, tractor it goes and connects to this which is the tank which has the uh, the ammonia in it so these I imagine yeah it's got a hitch on and so it must go through here connects to these special made cultivators that then put it into the ground fertilizing cultivator side dress side dressing I don't know what that means, but I think the fertilizing cultivator means that it hooks in to it, it connects uh, to this, and then can be um, fertilized with the ammonia. So I know these tanks are scattered around the area as well, the map. Um, there is one in particular, but I don't think we can run any of these. 75, maybe this one. 5.2 meters to cultivator, so it's bigger than the cultivator we have. And we could fertilize with it at the same time if we're doing ammonia. Hmm. But it's forming a high concentration of nitrogen, it creates more valuable nutrients. So it's really good for it. As long as I think before you put it in, before you put because you're cultivating, you're doing it at the same time of cultivating. So that is very cool, something I'd like to try. And I don't think we have to really pay for it, because there is on the map already uh, that setup over here. So we'll just visit very quickly. Here are some of the cultivators. I think it's only the biggest ones, though. Yeah, this is the the medium size, 350 horsepower. And this one, I don't even want to know, probably 500 horsepower. But here we also have the tanks for it as well. This is the fill point. So obviously we'd lower them here. It's got the two connectors that go to the, uh, the top there. You can see on here. And, uh, yeah, so it says rented by, so it says I'm rented it, so I imagine if I were to use these, I'd probably be hit with a rental fee if you're using them, potentially, but I don't know. There are the big ones here as well. So the fact that we can actually just come here, pick these up, use them, and potentially get charged for them for using them, which is fine, obviously, um, is pretty cool. Because it's something different. I would really like to look in to doing something like that. Um, I think what I'd like to do before we end the month and the episode, because we do not have anything else to do here in this month. Well, actually, I suppose we could probably spread some kind of fertilizer on here. We're not going to cultivate it, of course, but because we are putting alfalfa in again, uh, we probably could do it now. Um, but there is something a bit more pressing that I'd like to do because I could do this later as well but I would like to for the first time try out our freight liner absolutely amazing oh yes so I know it seems like oh what are you doing mate why do you have a European glory on your American farm. Well, it's not European. Freightliner is very much an American trucking truck company. Uh, but, yeah, the cab over is a bit reminiscent, of course, but I just prefer the look, um, based on the fact that this particular one just looks really good, and it's a really nice mod as well. This one right here. We'll just get connected. 
to our trailer and I think yeah it just looks it just looks good better for turning and all and I know I, I could probably add another axle and I probably will do in the future but again I just wanted to keep it simple for now right so we are taking this to go and buy some potatoes because I would we're not gonna have any moisture food for the animals and we need it for both so I think if we get one big haul of potato, is this too much though? Because this holds, oops, should probably hit the brakes, there we go. This holds 35,000, whereas these hold 15. I think we should take this, at least put in 20,000 litres. I mean, if we look at the, let's see. So we've got them at 20. So I reckon that is probably you know what? Nah, let's just fill it. Let's fill it full and we'll use what we need and then we don't have to worry about any moisture food for a while after that. So, I have set up a small buy point for potatoes uh, in a different area to that in which I set up the manure. Um, but I have to remember where I've set it. Oh yes, it is at the main sort of town, so where we started the series which is over here. So I think I've set it up right there. So we will tag it, and uh, we'll make our way down here, go up, and then take the first road into the small town. And we'll do it in a bit of a time lapse. Right here we are at the buy point. So hopefully the way I've set this up still allows us to actually purchase things. Might have to get out. Ah, oh, brilliant. Okay. First thing I'd like to untag it, because usually when you get to a place it'll untag itself. But this is a buying station, so we can buy anything we need, although I am going to focus on buying potatoes. That is going to be my thing, and I can't. Right. Multi-fruit is a lie, or we can't hold potatoes in this trailer. We can't hold potatoes in this trailer. I have been deceived. That is not good, but I understand why. I understand why, because it is a, um, a belly-loading trailer so that's my fault I made that mistake let's have a look then at what we're going to do so I suppose we need to get the both of these because they can both hold spuds which is great so we will get yeah about the same amount a little bit less but that is absolutely fine so what I think we're gonna do is obviously we'll have to take the lorry back to the farm uh, we'll do that then we'll grab the possibly the pickup because that will probably be the easiest option for speed getting down here at least and uh, then we can finally get some potatoes bought for the animals right we have made it back safe and sound in the pickup and we are here to load up some spuds so that's what we will do there we go potatoes and so I don't know how much this is going to cost us Hopefully not too much. Okay, so £4,000. That's not bad. Um, especially since we will be getting the cows up and running, which will produce milk, which will bring in much more than £4,000. Most of this will probably end up going to the cows, though. Anyways, I'm just going to quickly pull over and uh, probably grab a quick bite to eat here while I'm in the the town before we head back to the farm but this is where we end uh, the episode for today so we do have this 30,000 litres of potatoes in our two Parker uh, gravity wagons so what we're gonna do with that is feed it into uh, the cow trough and then save some as well for the chickens I don't think we will have enough left over to um, 
to dump onto the ground somewhere, so that is fine. As long as it's full, then it's done. Then we're done with spuds for now. But I would like to in the future do some uh, potato harvesting, potentially sugar beets, but more than likely we will do potatoes. Um, and then all their base food and that we can saw. We have the silage, we have the loads and loads of hay, and then we can make mineral feed in next month uh, because we'll be able to harvest wheat at that time. So, yeah, things are looking up. Really, really excited about the start of uh, American farming here. Cannot wait to get our harvester out into the field for the first time, uh, but that will be in the next episode. So until then, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, a cheeky thumbs up really does help out the channel, and please subscribe. So once again, thank you for watching, and until the next one, please do take care, and bye for now.